It is quite the mission, Justin. We are here with more than 20 people who are from Metro Atlanta. Three, though, are originally from here in Cuba. One of them owns a major food distribution business, so he wanted to come back, walk these streets, explore the bay like he once did as a child, and I was sitting next to him on the flight as he got to see Cuba for the first time in nearly 50 years. We're here with a delegation from Metro Atlanta, and among them is a general manager from Delta Airlines. He oversees the Caribbean. He also oversees Central America. And so with these policies possibly changing in the near future, he says that Delta really wants to play a major role. Only Channel 2 Action News talked to the man whose stolen truck was used in a chase that ended with an officer-involved shooting. My photographer and I put medical scrubs on this morning and watched the surgeries that will bond the two forever. What an amazing gift she gave to him. Look oh, at that. Oh, incredible. And I was tweeting live updates during that surgery today. Just amazing to see that. And right now in Georgia, there are 5,000 people who are in desperate need wow. of a kidney. And Craig, the concern right now, though, is for hundreds of hostages inside a theater. Joe Vita, in the last five minutes, the French president said that he will declare a state of emergency. And also he said that he would be closing the borders. Right now, attackers are holding 100 people hostage at a Paris concert hall. Look at the amount of police on scene. Police say deaths are reported there at the concert hall, but it's unclear right now just how many. Investigators say attacks killed 11 people in a Paris restaurant and hundreds of people, as you can see, rushed onto the field after two explosions were heard during a, so a soccer match between the French and German national teams. Now, within the past 10 minutes, President Obama talked about these attacks in Paris and he said that the U.S. stands with the people of Paris. Now, we want to be very clear that we stand in pursuit of happiness. President Obama also called these attacks outrageous, saying that they would continue to work with the French people and bring these terrorists to justice. U.S. officials monitoring these attacks say that there is no known threat against the United States right now. We, of course, will stay on top of this. Reporting live in the Satellite News Center, Craig Lucy, Channel 2 Action News. Two explosions in Paris near a stadium during a football match. These are live pictures from French television, which is reporting Several people are dead. You can see the officers there on the scene right now. Investigators have not said if a shootout at a nearby restaurant is also linked to this explosion. Video and information is coming in every few minutes, every few moments. So we will have the new developments as we learn them and as they come into our newsroom. Dunwoody police are cracking down on speeders just days before school starts in DeKalb County. People living near these four schools in Dunwoody are worried about drivers going too fast in the school zones. I went to Dunwoody this afternoon where police revealed some of their tactics and a device that compiles data on speeders in certain areas. Yeah. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to you, buddy. Happy New Year. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Does it look all right? Looking good. <laughs> Looking Thank good. Thank you for counting on Channel 2 Action News. Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' with Ryan Seacrest next with a huge lineup. <laughs> Here is a live look at Underground Atlanta where thousands are waiting for the peach to drop to ring in the new year. We will see you in 2016. Have a Happy great new safe year. night. Channel 2 anchor Craig Lucy traveled with the group. He's live from Havana. Craig, this delegation has some lofty goals. They really do. I want to show you the view from the rooftop where we are. Off in the distance, there's a Jesus Christ statue that they're currently cleaning at this moment. And then if you look further down, that's a town called Casablanca. Over here to my left, there's an oil refinery. And just right next to it is a town called Regla. We took a pedestrian ferry over there today. It was amazing, an amazing experience. And we're here with a group of about 20 from Metro Atlanta, some business leaders that are in the food industry, some people who are in the real estate industry, also one woman who owns a multi-million dollar business and what she would like to do is use her business to help renovate and rebuild some of these very old buildings. Havana, Cuba. It's a place stuck in time and time has taken a toll on many of the buildings. We're excited about it. I hope it's an opportunity for us. Mary Allen sees these historic buildings as a way to grow her business, Atlanta Rod and Manufacturing. After President Barack Obama asked Congress to start the process of lifting the economic embargo, Allen started asking around to find a way to legally get to Cuba. She found it when she contacted the World Affairs Council of Atlanta. Very exciting, and my people were very excited. You know, they said, oh, wow, how exciting if we could be one of the first American companies to go in there with infrastructure product. How much could your business really help out Cuba? It would depend on the engineering. We could 
furnish a lot of product to this country. Alan hopes to meet some people who are in the construction industry and from this view on top of our hotel you can see the number of dilapidated buildings but we also notice that some of them are currently being renovated. Alan, like many in our group, didn't know what to expect during our drive around Havana. I did not think it was in this condition. When you say this condition? So run down. I really, it's so much more so than I thought it would be. Really surprising. Ambassador Charles Shapiro, who is the president of the World Affairs Council of Atlanta, says Alan and other business owners are perfectly positioned should Congress make a move soon. Atlanta's a great place to fly to Cuba from. Fly to Atlanta, make a connection with Delta, and then fly directly here. And I think that's going to be great. And we flew from Miami here to Havana. Easy flight. It was just an hour. But once we got to the airport, we ran into some issues. We were actually there for about two and a half hours. Our photographer got stopped. We had an issue with customs. I recorded a lot of that with my iPhone, and I'm putting a report together for our WSBTV.com website, along with other reports about these amazing cars from the 50s, the Cuban cuisine. There is so many interesting stories to tell since we've been here. But we really have a jam-packed schedule. I had lunch with the mayor, and he's going to talk about exactly why he's here and that is coming up for tomorrow. We are live in Havana, Cuba. Craig Lucy, Channel 2 Action News, Nightbeat. Some unbelievable sights, Craig. You know, with the embargo still in place, how optimistic is the group they'll be able to do business in Cuba? You know, a lot of people are very optimistic, but at the same time, they know that this could take years. In fact, I was listening in on a lecture this morning, a man who is from here in Cuba. He's an expert in urban planning. He referred to it as like building a building. So right now we're working on the foundation of that building with the Cuba and U.S. relations. So everybody knows that it will take some time, but they are very optimistic. All right, we'll look forward to your future reports. Craig, thank you. Take a look at this scene. You can hear the cheers and applause as this little guy emerged today from a pipe in DeKalb County. We have new video of firefighters pulling that seven-week-old puppy out of a PVC pipe for a four-year-old girl. And I was in Lithonia earlier today as a huge rescue operation unfolded. She was just gone. Seven-week-old puppy Tashi disappeared Tuesday morning, falling six feet down right into this PVC pipe. We did what we could at first. We called 911. They sent animal control. They really couldn't do anything. But the Cab County Fire Rescue and the Public Works Department could. At first, they used a shovel, but that wasn't doing the job. So crews brought in an excavator. As Public Works employees dug, firefighters kept an eye on Tashi, dropping a small camera down the pipe. But a ruptured water main made things worse because now the puppy could drown. Finally, after eight hours of being trapped, this happened. Now they're using a sign to block the water. There, they just brought the puppy out. There it is. There's the puppy, they saved it. Look at that. When they pulled her out, I was just like, wow. These people must really be dedicated to their job. Four-year-old Sarai got her puppy back. My puppy is so bad. He calls non trouble. He's cold, He's not cold. Tashi was very cold. <laughs> and as a vet wiped her down, Sarai told us she got Tashi for her birthday just a week ago. I got my birthday present. She just had a four-year-old birth, four-year birthday, and that was her gift for her birthday. So just to be able to give her pet back to her, it was great. And when Sarai got to hold her again, she thanked God. Amen. Amen. Oh my Amen. gosh, that is the cutest Absolutely thing. I'm so adorable. glad that puppy's okay. It was amazing. Oh. Everybody had chills. Take a look at this data from their recent speed monitoring trailer. From July 29th to August 5th, there were 22,652 vehicles with an average speed of 38 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone. Out of those vehicles, 2,373 vehicles were traveling more than 45 miles per hour. Now, if you have speeders in your area, most Metro Police Departments will allow you to request one of those speed trailers. We are putting a link on our website on how you can review the data that they've collected on speeders so far over in Dunwoody.